talking about. Okay, so something in the air, which is the new film from Olivia Assayas, who made Clean and Demon Lover, and that Carlos mini series that became a film, and also Cold Water Way Back, which, with which this shares two character names, Gilles and Christine. So Paris, early seventies. Gilles is a politically active student who, along with his friends, hands out you know mimeograph papers and protest leaflets and magazines and campaigns against police brutality and indulges in graffitiing buildings and generally spends a lot of time making radical art and smoking. And boy, is there a lot of smoking in this. One night, following one of their spray painting raids, they're chased by special police officers, one of whom is then quite suddenly very badly injured and put into a coma. As a result of it, the, these young radicals have to disperse, have to leave the country. So he then sort of goes off towards uh, Italy, where he becomes involved with radical filmmakers. He does more painting and a lot more smoking, and then later moves towards London. And the thing about the, the, the film is this. It is a great, sprawling and clearly very personally felt epic, but I use the word epic bearing in mind that there's another film out this week called, called Epic. epic. What it is, is it has, I mean, there's, there, there is this, this great romanticism for, you know, post-1968, you know, Paris left politics. The French title of this means after May. There's something in the area, the, you know, obviously the, not the English translation, but the English retitling. And there is this great romanticization for that period, you know, the post-68 period. And there's, here's a quote from the director. He says, Youth in the 2010s live in the shapeless present. They exist outside of history, cyclic and static. The thought that you can have a say in society, that you can even rethink its very nature, has become vague and conventional. No one makes plans for a brighter tomorrow, a future utopia. The thing is, this isn't going to spur them to do that. In order to enjoy and appreciate something in the air, you have to be somebody who's kind of quite interested in that sort of lefty stu student and post-student, post-68 lifestyle anyway. Now, as a boring old lefty trot in Manchester in the 1980s, even then, we all thought that the romanticisation of post-68 French lefty lifestyle was a little bit navel-gazing and somewhat narcissistic and, frankly, a little dull. Since one of the things that the director talks about is the fact that, you know, that, that the youth today don't have this sort of, this sense of, of idealism. And he talks about things like, you know, um, the in the 1970s, we were against the very thought of a government. No one wanted to be included. The plan of action was uh, among the excluded. And he talks about how that, that, you know, that sort of thing doesn't exist anymore. And if what the film was going to do was to sort of fire people up, it would have to involve, it seems to me that in a way the director is so in love with the period because of his own sort of personal connection with it. He's kind of forgotten to tell us why we should be interested in it. Now, actually, I am interested in it to some extent, but it is, as I said, the, the, the problem is that the narrative is so, is so fractured that it just assumes that you're completely engrossed in the world of these people. And actually, the, the evocation of the time, the detail, the, you know, the, the small nuances, the, you know, the typefaces, the printing, the, all that stuff is done really well. But in order to bring people into it who weren't already involved and interested in that period, what you have to have is a narrative which you know it w was was at least more conventional. In as much as it didn't just leave things lying around casually as the main characters do. And one central thing being that there is this thing right at the beginning: this guy's injured really badly, and there are consequences to it. And then that bit of the plot seems to be forgotten about for a long time. And then it sort of comes back a lot later on. And meanwhile, people wander off. I mean, it is clear, incidentally, that most of these people are actually living a very privileged existence. They, you know, they always have access to travel and to endless supply of cigarettes. And uh, and they hang out in great big houses that are obviously owned by their wealthy parents. And every now and Did then... Did all French intellectuals smoke? Oh, yeah. Well, apparently, I mean, according to this, yeah, if you stubbed out the cigarettes, that would have been it. You know, the revolution, you know, and il, il, est, il est fini? Yeah, what is it? What's the French for non-fumé? Pas, pas de fumé, probably, whatever it is. But there, I mean, it is funny, even sitting in the cinema, you start to get a bit headache because I've got, I hate smoking, and you get a bit headachey just watching the constant smoking. But, you know, they all, they worry about art and they worry about literature and they worry about Trotsky and Lenin and anarchy and every now and then they set fire to themselves and fall out of windows. And it all, it all seems terribly inconsequential. And if, to me, as a bit of a dreary, boring old you know, lefty, if I thought it was a little bit unengaging, I think others are going to have more of a problem with it. That said, I'm not dismissing it out of hand because he has got a fantastic eye for detail. He has got a really good way of evoking time and place, which is done very well. And you, you do believe in these characters. Believing in them is one thing. 
being interested in them is something else. And there was a part of me that just thought, yeah, enough already. Get a job. 